Start the day off, we would measure out the amount of water to go into the steaming pot. We have to get the same amount of water each time because the more heat that would go into heating the water instead of steaming it, the less would be available for steaming the rice. We found that to, in order to train people best, we had to have a list of instructions up on the wall. So now they're taking some time to look at these instructions. This was one of the best parts of our work was seeing how the cooks lit the fire. We called it the donut method because they put the charcoal around the sides of the the stove and they built it up very carefully. In the testing we've done in the lab, we use lighter fluid and not everyone has lighter fluid or kerosene, it's a derivative of kerosene. And so we just pile the charcoal on by, and light it without thinking about how it's structured. Here you think very carefully about how it's structured and depending on how you stack those pieces of charcoal, you'll get it to light faster and you'll get it to smoke less. So this was a great example of going to the field and learning something new from cooks. She lights that resinous wood wrapped in, in leaves so that catches easily and she puts it in the middle of the donut. So now I've switched to the improved stove but you can still see we lit the fire in the middle of the donut and then put other pieces of charcoal on top of the flames. You can already see it's smoking quite a bit but it gets the drop down quick and it doesn't use very much fuel. So she just puts the charcoal on top of the flame each time. Then it gets up to big flames. So now she's got the sticky rice on top of the in the pot and that's all on the stove now so the the time for cooking has started here. We include the startup time as different from the cooking time. So she's checking the rice. It's uh, about to be done now. She gives it that flip to see how well how sticky it is and see if it's in a big ball. You can see it's steaming quite a bit. So the rice is about done and she's she just is starting to prepare the surface that she's going to dump the rice out on. So she puts it in a pan that we designated for weighing rice. And so all we're doing now is checking to see how much rice was cooked. The biggest what we're concerned with in the controlled cooking test is finding out how much food was cooked for how much fuel was used. So this is the first measurement we take, first outcome we get to show there's this much fuel. Now the process of cooking, she pours it on the surface and she needs it, I think it was to get rid of the excess moisture. So we're just watching to see how the cooks do this so that any time we go and try to reproduce this test, we can know that was how the recipe was done. So everyone's watching the same way, taking notes of how it was done. So there's some specialized cooking utensils here for this 
common task of sticky rice so it goes into this big basket storage there and so at the end of the day we had a that whole basket would be full and here's an example of a challenge we had they're taking the measurement of how much water was left over from the steaming operation and I had included that as something they should measure so that we could get a better sense of where the energy went from the cooking. Now the challenge was that we only wanted to teach them the basics of the cooking te test just how much fuel there is and how much food was cooked but this was a second layer of measurements to be taken so it added to the confusion so in the future we'll be able to just separate the simple cooking task with the more advanced trying to improve the method. So now the second phase of the test begins. She's put the stir fry pan on and she's got the oil in it. So she's just getting ready, just getting the oil ready. Now she has the pork on stir frying that. That was the basis of this meal. Was pork and a bunch of different spices and morning glory. And we'll see that later. So she had some MSG and she had some salt. Another ingredient she has down there, which is her sauce and soy sauce and fresh peppers and ground black pepper. So the charcoal is easy to use. It doesn't take any tending. She just puts the pan on top of it and it's got high heat like they need. And people love it because, because it's so easy to work with. This is what we really like to see, was the participants are very active and just wanting to make sure they got all the details down, so he's copying from a friend. Everyone has their own sheet so that they're sure to get the same information. And each of these participants would go back to their respective organizations and share this knowledge with them. Now you see what they call morning glory. It's a big stack, just kept piling it on there and it would cook down. So each of the participants would watch this cooking process and take details of how it was done. With the whole point of making sure that within each test, each iteration of the test, it's the same recipe same proportion of ingredients and recording the the edible outcome of the test So now she's weighing the morning glory and the and the pork. So this is the second phase of the test, second outcome. Now we have to weigh how much fuel was used. So for charcoal, we just weigh the stove plus the fuel. We subtract how much the stove weighed from the total to know how much fuel there is. There's a little heat shield on the top of that scale. 
protect it. In the lab we found that the ceramic stoves change weight every time they're burned because of moisture. So when they're hot the moisture is driven off and the weight changes. So we found that there's a significant weight change comparable to how much charcoal is in the stove. So every time we test a ceramic or mud stove or any heavy stove, we have to be sure to weigh the empty weight of the stove. So that's what we're doing here. You saw him kick, it, kick the stove around so it just shows how much, what kind of stress the stove needs to take. The final measurement is to weigh the remaining amount of charcoal. 